Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about anemia in pregnancy. Anemia is the commonest hematologic disorder that may occur in pregnancy, the others being grassroots isoimmunization and blood coagulation disorders. According to the standard laid down by World Health Organization, anemia in pregnancy is present when the hemoglobin concentration in the peripheral blood is 11 grams per 100 ml or less. During pregnancy, plasma volume expands maximum around 32 weeks, resulting in hemoglobin dilution. For this reason, hemoglobin level below 10 grams per deciliter at any time during pregnancy is considered anemia. World Health Organization 1993 and Center for Disease Control 1990 Hemoglobin level at or below 9 grams per deciliter requires detailed investigation and appropriate treatment. Adopting this lower level, the incidence of anemia in pregnancy ranges widely from 40 to 80 percent in the tropics, compared to 10 to 20 percent in, de- in the developed countries. Anemia is responsible for 20 percent of maternal deaths in third world countries. So, what is the concept of physiological anemia? As previously stated, the dispropor- disproportionate increase in plasma volume, red blood cell volume, and hemoglobin mass during pregnancy. In addition, there is marked demand of extra iron during pregnancy, especially in the second half. Even an adequate diet cannot provide extra demand of iron. Thus, there always remains a physiological iron deficiency state during pregnancy. As a result, there is not only a fall in hemoglobin concentration and hematocrit value in the second half of pregnancy, but there is also associated low serum iron, increased iron binding capacity, and increased rate of iron absorption as found in iron deficiency anemia. Thus, the fall in the hemoglobin concentration during pregnancy is due to the combined effect of hemodilution and negative iron balance. The anemia in normocyt- is normocytic and normochromic in type. Normal blood values in non pregnant and pregnant state are given in the table below. So this is the table showing normal blood values in non pregnant and pregnant state. So hemoglobin non pregnant is 14.8 grams per deciliter and then second half of pregnancy 11 to 14 grams per deciliter. Red blood cells 5 million in second half of pregnancy 4 to 4.5 million. Packed cell volume or hematocrit 39 to 42% in non pregnant and 32 to 36% in second half of pregnancy. Main corpuscular volume is 27 to 32 micro of picograms and in second half of pregnancy it's 26 to 31 picograms. Main corpuscular volume is 75 to 100 cubic micron and in second half of pregnancy 75 to 95. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is 32 to 36 percent in non pregnant and 30 to 35 percent in second half of pregnancy. Serum iron is 60 to 120 micrograms per 100 ml in non pregnant and it's slightly lowered 65 to 75 micrograms per 100 ml in second half of pregnancy. Total iron binding capacity is 300 to 350 micrograms per 100 ml and it's increased to 300 to 400 micrograms per 100 ml in the second half of pregnancy. Saturation percentage ratio serum iron to total iron binding capacity is 30% in the non-pregnant state and is less than 16% in second half of pregnancy. Serum ferritin is 20 to 30 micrograms per liter in the non-pregnant state and 15 milligrams per liter in second half of pregnancy. Criteria of physiological anemia. The lower limit of physiological anemia during the second half of pregnancy should fulfill the following hematological values. 1. Hemoglobin to be 10 grams per deciliter or less. Red blood cells 3.2 million millimeter per millimeter cubic or less. Packed cell volume 32 percent or less. Peripheral smear showing normal morphology of the red blood cell with central pallor. Clinical features. The clinical features depend more on the degree of anemia than anything else. In the majority, the patients have got no symptom and the entity is detected accidentally during examination. However, the following features may develop slowly. Symptoms. Lassitude and a feeling of exhaustion or weakness may be the earliest manifestations. Two, the other features are anorexia and indigestion, palpitation caused by ectopic beats, dyspnea, 
giddiness and swelling of the legs. On examination, the pallor of varying degrees, evidence of glossitis and stomatitis, edema of the legs may be due to hypoproteinemia or associated preeclampsia. 3. A soft systolic mama may be heard in the mitral area due to physiological mitral incompetence. 4. Crepitations may be heard at the base of the lungs due to congestion. Investigations. The patient having a hemoglobin level 9 grams per deciliter or less should be subjected to a full hematological investigation. The objectives of investigation are to ascertain the cause of anemia, the degree of anemia. So what are the complications of anemia in pregnancy? During pregnancy, the following complications are likely to increase. One, preeclampsia may be related to malnutrition and hypoproteinemia. Two, intercurrent infection. Not only does anemia diminish resistance to infection, but also any pre-existing lesion if present will flare up. It should be noticed that the infection itself impairs erythropoiesis by bone marrow depression. Three, heart failure at 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy. Four, preterm labor. So what are the complications during labor? One, uterine inertia. It's not a common associate. On the contrary, on the contrary, the labor is short because of a small baby and multiparity. Two, postpartum hemorrhage is a real threat. Patient tolerates bad liver and minimal amount of blood loss. Three, cardiac failure. Maybe due to accelerated cardiac output which occurs during labor or immediately following delivery. As the blood in the uterine circulation is squeezed in the general circulation, it puts undue strain on the weak heart already compromised by hypoxia. 4. Shock Even a minor traumatic delivery without bleeding may produce shock or a minor hypoxia during anesthesia, which may be lethal. So complications in the puerperium. There is increased chance of one puerperal sepsis to uterine subinvolution. 3. Poor lactation. 4. Poor peril venous thrombosis, 5 pulmonary embolism. So, the risk periods. The risk period when the patient may even die suddenly are 1. At about 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy, 2. During labor, 3. Immediately following delivery, 4. Anytime in poor period, especially 7 to 10 days following delivery due to cardiac failure or pulmonary embolism. So, what are the effects of on baby? One amount of no, amount of iron transferred to the fetus is unaffected, even if the mother suffers from iron deficiency anemia. So the neonate does not suffer from anemia at birth. There is increased incidence of low birth weight babies with incidental hazards to intrauterine death due to severe maternal anoxemia. The some effect is increased perinatal loss. What's the prognosis? Maternal. If detected early and proper treatment is instituted, anemia improves promptly. At times, there is a tendency for anemia to recur in subsequent pregnancy. In fact, anemia either directly or indirectly contributes to about 20% of maternal deaths in the third world countries. Fetal prognosis. If detected early and responsive to treatment, the fetal prognosis is not too bad. In severe and neglected cases, the fetal prognosis is adversely affected by prematurity with its hazards. Baby born at terms to severely anemic mother will not be anemic at birth, but as there is little or no reserve iron, anemia develops in neonatal periods. Main cord blood levels of serum iron. Ferritin, vitamin B12, and folate are higher than that of mother. However, total iron binding capacity and serum level of vitamin E are lower than that of mother. So, what is the general treatment? Diet. A realistic balanced diet rich in proteins, iron, and vitamins, and which is easily assimilable, is prescribed. Two, to improve the appetite and facilitate digestion. Preparation containing acid pepsin may be given thrice daily after meals. 3. To eradicate even a minimal septic focus by appropriate antibiotic therapy. For effective therapy to cure the disease contributing to the cause of anemia. Specific therapy. The principle is to raise the hemoglobin level as near to normal as possible. Thereafter, an attempt is made to restore the iron reserve at least in part, if possible, before the patient goes in labor. So, the choice of therapy depends on one severity of anemia 
duration of pregnancy, test time available before delivery, the associated complicating factors. So iron therapy, oral therapy, iron is best absorbed in the ferrous form and as such any of the ferrous preparations available, either in tablets or capsules may be conveniently prescribed. Parenteral therapy, can give iron dextrin or iron sucrose. So what is the place of blood transfusion? Indication of blood transfusion in anemia during pregnancy is very much limited. The indications are 1. To correct anemia due to blood loss and to combat postpartum hemorrhage. 2. Patients with severe anemia seen in later months of pregnancy beyond 36 weeks to improve the anemic state and oxygen carrying capacity of blood before the patient goes into labor. The primary concern is not only to correct anemia but also to make the patient fit to withstand the strain of labor and blood loss following delivery. 3. Refractory anemia. Anemia not responding to either oral or parenteral therapy in spite of correct typing for associated infection. So that's all about anemia in pregnancy. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and comment. Thank you.